On today's episode of Ask Dr. Bitcoin, we're going to talk about how to spend your Bitcoin literally everywhere. Stay tuned. So one of the first things I want to show you how to do today is how to spend your Bitcoin natively, because we're going to talk about how to spend it in a variety of different ways uh, in places where you shop every day. But to understand how all that works, it's going to help if you understand how to spend it just to another person that wants to receive Bitcoin or other types of cryptocurrency. So I'm going to show you a couple things today. I'm going to show you how to spend cryptocurrency natively and literally everywhere. So the first thing I'm going to show you is because sometimes even for uh, folks that have been investing in cryptocurrency for some time, understanding how to spend it natively is still a challenge because you maybe you bought it because you're trying to make some money on your Bitcoin or, or just use look at it as an investment. And then one day you say, hey, you know what, I want to spend, you know, five, ten bucks here and there. And you don't you realize you don't exactly know how to do it. So I'm going to walk you through how to do it on uh, one of the simplest wallets that are out there, uh, one called Coinomi. And then I'll show you how to spend your Bitcoin anywhere, even places where they don't have cryptocurrency accepted. So um, I have my, my phone here, and of course I've got a Wilco wallet over here. They're both currently open to Coinomi right now. Uh, this is the most common way that you will uh, probably be spending your cryptocurrency is someone will have a wallet uh, on their mobile device and they'll say, hey, you know, just send me $5, send me 20 bucks. So what you'll do, what they'll do is they'll pop up their receive screen. As you can see, there's a little QR code here. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your wallet of choice, go to your send screen, and you're going to want to look for something that looks like a little QR code icon that will almost certainly uh, and certainly in the case of Quinomi, but almost certainly in any device, any wallet software, pop up your camera mode, as you can see here. And then you just point it at the, uh, the QR code. Very easy. Very, uh, and then you type in the amount. So here's what where uh, you probably want to understand the mechanics of what's going on in the background here. Uh, usually, a wallet is going to be hooked up to uh, a price exchange somewhere, either going to be a composite price from coinmarketcap.com, or if it's like Coinbase, they're going to have their own internal spot price that they use. So you want to be careful that you understand exactly how this is hooked up and you've been, you know, got a decent internet connection because if you type something in incorrectly here and it's got an out of date price, you could be sending an incorrect amount of cryptocurrency. But in this case, we're going to send 50 bucks over. I'm going to trust the conversion mechanism here to calculate that properly rather than switching over here and typing in an exact amount of cryptocurrency like that. I'm just going to go back over here and type in 50 US dollars. It's going to calculate that out to be 0.00723 Bitcoin. Hit send. This is another important thing to understand is your transaction fees. This will impact how quickly the person is able to spend the Bitcoin that you just sent them. Uh, in Coinbase, you have some very broad controls that just say if it's going to be low, normal, or high priority. Uh, in other cryptocurrency wallets such as Mycelium or BitPay, you can actually control the, the, the exact amount of how much you're spending on transaction fees. Why does that matter? If you're in a, uh, if it's an environment uh, in the Bitcoin world, as it sometimes happens, where there is a high amount of usage, this occurred in 2017 from September through uh, early parts of December, you needed to actually put high priority on your transaction fees and sometimes spend upwards of $40 per transaction to actually have something go through in a reasonable amount of time. These days, thanks to advances with the Lightning Network and SegWit, you can, actually, you can get uh, transaction fees down to about five or six cents no matter how much money you're sending and it'll usually transact and confirm within about 10 or 15 minutes. So as you can see here, I'm spending about seven cents on a normal priority transaction. I'm going to hit confirm. If you look over here on my other screen, give it about 10 seconds and it'll pop up. Yep, there it is. It'll show up as an unconfirmed transaction. So that means you can rest assured that the transaction has gone through to who you sent the money to. Uh, this wallet will probably not let them spend that money for about another 10 minutes or until the first or second confirmation comes through. Important to know. But if you're ever receiving cryptocurrency or someone's paying you this way, 
99% of the time, even with zero confirmations, you can trust that the money is going to come through at some point eventually. So you don't have to worry about whether or not it's immediately spendable. So that is how do you spend your cryptocurrency natively. It'll provide you extra utility, extra liquidity, and will not constrain you to the usage of Bitcoin ATMs. Enjoy. Well, there you have it, your blockchain and cryptocurrency prescription. As always, these are just my thoughts and I encourage you to seek out a second opinion. Subscribe for more videos on blockchain and cryptocurrency and if you enjoyed today's video, share it with a friend so they can see. Thanks for watching and don't forget to see the receptionist on your way out.